Hello and welcome to the Jungle Nook. I think the name of the channel is very appropriate for today's video. We're going to be concentrating on the houseplants, particularly the uh, tropical varieties. I started my collection out about two years ago and uh, I think the room's finally starting to fill out and get a nice tropically vibe to it. Um, when I first started out, I was going after inexpensive plants that were easy to care for uh, and uh, were fast growing and easy to propagate. So because of that, you're going to see a lot of the plants in here uh, repetitively. Uh, I've been propagating stuff and using it to fill the room in and make it seem more lush and full. I do have a road trip planned for this summer and one of the greenhouses that I'm going to be going to specializes exclusively in tropical plants and they have uh, quite a nice variety of some more rarer plants that are on my wish list. And I, I do have a few, uh, few rarer types here that I will show and highlight. Um, I use the common name, common names when I talk about my plants. I did briefly try to uh, learn, memorize, and be able to uh, correctly pronounce the Latin names. But to be honest with you, that was not fun. So I use the common names when talking about my plants. Um, so like I said, I have a lot of the plants that are repetitive. For instance, right here, this wall of monsteras. Um, there's actually three large pots with multiple vines in each, and I have stakes in them to help them have a more uh, upright growth structure. In the back here is a uh, spindle, spindle palm in the back, and next to that is a philodendrium brazil growing out of a hanging basket. A lot of these plants, like the pothos and the philodendrons and stuff, I have in the hanging baskets. You can also grow these on uh, moss poles. And if you grow them on a moss pole that you're able to keep moist, uh, they'll get much larger leaves. And sometimes the, uh, the, the shape of the leaf and stuff will actually change as it's a more mature plant. Um, back here, I have a dry moss pole where I do have a, uh, another one of these... Uh, philodendron brazil is growing from these leaves will stay small but eventually they'll grow all the way up to the top and then once they grow to the top the the vines will trail back down and it'll be a real nice lush full pole here's the uh the base of that spindle spindle palm it's actually a pretty big uh pretty big stem right there her trunk i'm not even sure I'm not an expert with this stuff i just uh really enjoy growing plants. I do um, actually, uh, I'm a landscaper, uh, and more accurate description of me would be a gardener. I do do some landscaping too. Um, but what I've done in this house is I've taken what I've learned uh, from the outdoor gardening and tried to incorporate it inside. If you guys are interested in how I'm able to get my plants to uh, look the way that I do, I'm more than willing to put a video out on how I care for my plants. You know, uh, just leave some comments below letting me know if you're actually interested in that. And, uh, and I'll do that. I'll, I'll make a video on that. My next video is going to be on uh, moss poles. I've been experimenting with the moss poles. I've come up with two different types. I mean, there are things that I found online, you know, on YouTube, but there's two different types that I really like that I get good results on now, and I'll be making a video on how to make them. But uh, as far as how I care for the plants, you know, you can Google your individual plants and uh, find out how to care for them. Plants will come with tags, and, you know, you can read the tag. Um, now, what I'm about to say is my opinion and I think that a lot of what you're gonna get from uh, Google or from those tags is just uh, real simple, basic instructions and how you can care for those individual plants to help ensure that your plant survives. Uh, there's a big difference between a plant surviving and a plant really thriving with nice, lush, healthy growth. Um, and what I have discovered and learned over the years 
is uh, sometimes now that advice that you get on Google or on YouTube, you know, a lot of it on those tags, that's excellent advice. But again, it's for survival, not for uh, thriving. Um, some of the things that I do are contrary to what you will, uh, you'll hear. Um, some of the things I do, you're actually told not to do. One example is, and I am not recommending you do this without understanding how, but like most of my plants grow in a tropical rainforest where it rains every day. Um, I try to reproduce those conditions here in my house and I do actually water my plants almost every single day. Don't do that without understanding how to do it. Um, but there's other little things that I do that are contrary to to the norm and if you're interested you know let me know I'll make a video it's super simple but I have I've never had really any problems no major problems with pests um, the thing is with these tropical plants and most house plants uh, you're pretty much if they're just surviving you're always gonna have a young small plant uh, this, the, these monsteras is a good example. When I got the, the first plant, you know, most of the leaves, most of the leaves looked like these. And there were a handful that were like this or like this one right here. But as the, as the plant gets more mature and puts out more mature leaves, and this still is not a mature leaf, but you'll see how it has much more fenestrations, these, these uh, slits in it and the holes. Uh, that's, a, that's where the vine's becoming mature. Uh, the same thing can happen with things like uh, this um, golden pothos right here. This is a dry moss pole. So the leaves are still small, but if you were to grow this on a wet, a constantly wet, well, I should say moist, not wet, moist moss pole. These leaves can get like two feet long or even more, and they'll even get fenestrations very similar to the, uh, to the uh, monsteras. Here's a uh, heart leaf philodendrium. Now these leaves are a little, little bit larger than, than usual uh, because it is growing up but they would be even larger if this pole was able to stay, stay moist. Here, I'll, I'll show you. I got some more. Uh, I got some more of these Hartley philodendrums over here uh, in, uh, in hanging baskets. And you'll see the leaves are a lot smaller. Not only are they smaller, but uh, where the leaves grow out, these are nodes right here where a root can grow from. Uh, the vine will be smaller, thinner, and the leaves and the nodes will be spaced out farther. Over on this moss pole where I have uh, another golden pothos on a pole that I'm able to keep moist, the, the leaves are smaller at the bottom. See, the leaves, it's not, it's, you know, your typical, typical leaf. And if you look at the vine, here, I'll put my finger so you can see the vine's smaller. But as it's growing up this moss pole, You'll notice that the vine's getting thicker and the space between the nodes a little bit smaller and the leaves are starting to get larger. And as this continues to grow up, to grow up the, uh, the pole, the leaves will continue to get larger and larger and larger. What I do on these poles right here, it's actually two different sections. Once this grows all the way to the top, I can remove this and cut this because where these nodes are, they are actually growing uh, their aerial roots. I don't know if you'll be able to see it, but they're growing their aerial roots right into the damp moss. And when it goes in there, these aerial roots actually uh, form water roots and they're able to take up moisture and nutrients. And the pole's actually the pot. The pot down here is just to hold it in place and for the excess water to drain drain out of but then you can continuously uh, keep removing the top part of the uh, of the pole with the top part the growing part of the vine that's already rooted and get huge leaves 